Well, welcome back. It's still Tuesday, the 7th of April. Now, in this video, I want to report what the data has been collected from the Intensive Care National Audit and Research Centre, ICNARC. This is their report of the 4th of April. Now, as we know, most people who get COVID-19 get a mild disease, but approximately 16% are going to get more serious disease and 5 or 6% of the total that catch COVID-19, as far as we know at the moment, are going to get a more serious critical disease. And so th these are the patients that are likely to end up in, in intensive care. So this ICNARC organisation, Intensive Care National Audit and Research Centre, collects data from all over the UK and collates it. So it helps us understand a little more information about the people that are getting critically ill. And hopefully it'll help us to try and work out why people are getting critically ill. Although this is still quite a bit of a, a mystery. There's still quite a few unknowns in this, unfortunately. And, and this will illustrate that in this report. So this report is from 210 intensive therapy units in the UK based on a sample of 2,900 patients. Now, data wasn't collected for all of these patients, so the actual sample size is somewhat smaller than this, but it's still over 2,000 patients. So it's a fairly representative sample. But of course, the caution is we're still at a relatively early stage in looking after these critical patients. So this is a very much a preliminary report, but it's the best data we've got from the UK so far. And the data collection and analysis for ICNARC is of the highest order. So this is very reliable data. Now, the first thing is the age. Now, the median age was 61, which is actually relatively low. And the interquartile range was 52 to 70. So what this means is 50% of the patients were in between the ages of 52 and 70. But of course, this also means that 25% of the patients were under the age of 52. 70%, 25% uh, of the patients were over the age of 70. So 25% of patients under 52, 25% of patients over 70, 50% of the patients are between 52 and 70. And this is younger than had been anticipated, at least younger than I had anticipated. And the sex, well, again, it's clear that men are getting more severe disease than, than women. Huge sex difference there. So of these patients admitted to intensive care, 27% were female, 73% <clears throat> were male. So that is a big difference. So the question is, why are more men getting critically ill than women? And... Uh, Right now, I don't know that I certainly don't know the answer, and I'm not sure anyone does know the answer. But this is a trend that's been observed in other countries. We noticed this back in January, actually, on this channel from early data from China. But uh, that is quite a striking sex difference with men. It now appears much more at risk of critical illness than women. Now, in terms of pregnancy, um, this has been a big concern that this would be causing complications in pregnancy. Now, this is the percentages of, of just the females, obviously. So 0.3% of females were pregnant. Now, of course, pregnancy is uh, women that are going to be in the, in the younger age category, obviously. Um, so that's G g given that we know that the condition is typically more serious with increasing age, although it's concerning that 25% of people are under the age of 52. Um, so it's, it's not surprising that the younger women are less affected. And of course, we know that less women are affected um, overall. So two factors there. So uh, relatively few um, women pregnant during admission. Uh, pregnancy within six weeks was 1.7%. So th this is women who were pregnant at the time. This is women who had been pregnant, or in other words, who had given birth or miscarried or something within within six weeks. 
and the vast majority of course weren't pregnant as you'd expect in the older age group so just from looking at that it, it looks like there's no huge problems associated with pregnancy emerging that are disproportionate to the proportion of uh, pregnant women in the population but as we say we're at an early stage but that's not I mean, of course of course 0.3% is massively concerning but it, it's uh, uh, from a population perspective it's not as bad as uh, some some had initially feared so <clears throat> um, that's age sex pregnancy so um, the age effect less than with thought the sex effect more than with thought I than I thought m being more men and no huge trend emergence emerging for complications of uh, pregnancy now ethnicity all the way through this there's been debate about particular races being affected more than others and there was these ridiculous myths in parts of Africa that black Africans wouldn't be affected by the disease well this is the breakdown that we have now from these patients in intensive care now the thing is that um, the trend I think we mentioned this the trend in London um, we didn't mention this I meant to London area um, the epidemic in my country that our share of the pandemic in the UK um, the cases have accelerated most quickly in the London area London and roundabout so many of these cases are in London at the moment now there are cases in other parts of the country of course and if you want to break down for your part of the country in any of this data I'm putting the link on so you can click directly to this ICNARC site so you can check on my interpretation of this and make sure it's correct but so we see that most of this data comes from London so and th there's a there's a preponderance of um, Asian and black people living in the London area compared to areas uh, that are more rural in the UK and white 64.8 percent of patients mixed race 1.2 percent Asian 13.8 black 13.6 others 6.6 .6. now an initial look at that would indicate that this is higher than you would expect now if this was for the country as a whole I would agree but given that this is biased towards London this is not too far out from the proportion of the general population having said that there is data from other areas that I haven't analyzed in detail yet for example New Orleans where it seems that black people are disproportionately affected and it just brings to my mind the possibility here that we know that the darker someone's skin is the less quickly they will produce vitamin D in the sunlight so I think especially well for anyone I think it's worth watching the video I did on vitamin D or getting other sources of evidence on vitamin D indeed I've got another study from Ireland which I'm going to um, make a video on as soon as time permits where the Irish government seem to be advocating additional vitamin D as indeed has been floated by me several times in the past so worth bearing in mind vitamin D is essential for immunity darker skin and the darker the skin the slower the vitamin D will produce and the lower the levels are likely to be especially at this time of the year in the UK but overall I don't think we can make too much of that because that is not too far out from the population profile when we consider the uh, the bias towards Asian and black people living in the London area likewise with body mass index now we had thought initially initial data the last time we looked at the first IGNAT report this is the second this is the most recent IGNAT report um, we had thought that there was a preponderance of severe cases in those which were overweight and obese certainly interesting to note that very few people that are very thin have a problem so very few people that are very thin undergoing critical care and intensive care units but there again people that are thin are very often young there's this phenomena called middle age spread where we tend to put a bit of weight on as we get older so if we compare this to the population of a, as a whole unfortunately most people in my country are somewhat overweight with a body mass index of over 
25. Um, a lot of people are carrying more weight than is good for them. So it's hard to say that there is an increasing trend with increasing body mass index here because this represents pretty well the population as a whole. There is a slight increase in, in people with uh, carrying more fat, more adipose tissue in the body. But again, it's not too far out from the general population profile because we are uh, very often uh, an overweight population. So again, nothing you can really, n nothing definite there that's jumping out of the page at us. Now, the people that required mechanical ventilation in the first 24 hours on, on, a, on admission to intensive care were 62%. Uh, so of those that were admitted to intensive care, 62% required mechanical ventilation in the first 24 hours. And of course, that means that 38% or so didn't. Now, this was another bit of a surprising finding. Um, comorbidities. Now, this report breaks comorbidities down into long-term respiratory disease, long-term cardiovascular disease. And I'd expected many more people requiring critical care to have comorbidities, but it's only 4.7% according to this data. So it means that quite a lot of people who are receiving intensive care do not have significant comorbidities. Now, having said that, this is an intensive care organisation and the criteria to qualify to have respiratory disease or heart disease is quite high. In, in other words, the people that they classify as having comorbidities have really quite serious other diseases, really quite serious chronic bronchitis or really quite serious hypertension. Actually, they didn't mention hypertension specifically, but we do know that's a link from other studies. Or they have really quite significant uh, congestive heart failure. So what this is actually saying is people that have very severe comorbidities are for 4.7%. Now, it doesn't mention this, but I expect people that have more minor comorbidities to be a way, way higher percentage than this. So again, that's not telling us too much, but it is telling us that people that are immunocompromised represented 2.3%. And again, that's probably not as high as you would expect. So people can be immunocompromised for many reasons. They could have a blood disorder or they could have uh, HIV or they could be uh, very malnourished or they could be on uh, chemotherapy or <clears throat> steroid drugs for other conditions. So um, I, must, I, I still expected that to be higher, but as I say, the bar to qualify as having a comorbidity is quite high because this is an intensive care context study. Now, moving on to look at some of the outcomes. Now, we have to remember that we're at a fairly early stage here, and this data was published on the 4th of April, so the outcomes are not yet known, because many patients are still in intensive care. So of over 2,000 patients that the data is based on, there's only outcomes available for 690 patients so far. And so far, 346 patients have died while in intensive care and 344 were discharged from intensive care alive. So we can see that that is pretty well 50% death rate in intensive care, almost exactly. Slightly uh, two more deaths than uh, live discharges, which of course is fairly discouraging but the vast majority of patients of the over 2,000 samplers we saw are still in intensive care we don't know whether they're going to live or die yet and unfortunately from other data it looks like there will be more deaths of people that are currently being managed in intensive care so unfortunately, I would expect the percentage of deaths to go up. And indeed, this is confirmed by further data. And this is on smaller sample sizes again, 548 patients. But basically, basic respiratory support in the intensive care unit was required by 32%. Uh, as we've said, that's basic life support is the uh, oxygen, supplementary oxygen, normally over 50%. Advanced life support is the mechanical ventilation. Now, of those in intensive care who only required basic respiratory support, 
the death rate was 16.3%. But of those that required advanced life support, the death rate was much higher. And again, as time goes on, unfortunately, this figure is probably going to rise. So it means that patients who are requiring mechanical ventilation are not having good outcomes. And this is consistent with other data from Italy. And the protocols for mechanical ventilation are currently being reassessed by intensivists as a result of this, because the outcome for people requiring mechanical ventilation is, is really quite disappointing. So protocols and uh, decisions as to who should be mechanically ventilated are currently being reviewed in the light of this data. Uh, now, basic cardiac support was required by quite a few. That's not surprising in intensive care. That's things like intravenous fluids and probably some basic drugs. But advanced uh, cardiac support was required by a smaller number. Now, I know these don't add up. Presumably some of those who had basic went on to require advanced cardiac support. So we see most people are requiring respiratory support, but there is some cardiac problems as well. But there again, we are dealing with people who have uh, comorbidities, although often not severe comorbidities, as we've noticed. So where does this get us? Um, well, we see that um, the, the, uh, the age is younger than we'd hoped, 50% of patients being 52 to 70. 25% of patients being younger than 52, 25% being older than 70. A great preponderance of males over females. No particular problems with pregnancy that are jumping out from the page. Difficult to adjudicate about ethnicity, but it seems that all races are probably, at the moment, affected roughly equally from this data. Slight preponderance of people with increased body mass index, but again, nothing that's that far out from the general population and we're seeing that the outcomes from mechanical ventilation so far are not very good so it's not really telling us too much and there's nothing really here that we can say well this is how you would avoid becoming critically ill from this data anyway now of course this is at an early stage more ICNARC data will be out fairly soon and we'll certainly review that when it comes but at the moment um, there's not a lot of new information that we can use to advise people how to prevent getting critical disease. Hopefully there will be soon.